how to upgrade your 13 inch MacBook Pro with a fast SSD that provides you faster and more storage. Guys, uh, excellent for tuning in. This is video two of my MacBook Pro upgrade series. And in the first video, what I did, I did install new memory and with my little stopwatch, I did measure the time that the MacBook Pro took with the stock configuration, the four gigabyte and the 500 gigabyte hard disk drive. And then I cleaned it and installed the memory and did the boot up test and Geekbench test again. And you saw the difference. But in the second video, it's not about the memory, it's about the solid state disk drive, which obviously plays a very important role because what good is a memory upgrade from four gigabyte to 16 gigabyte DDR3 uh, if the data isn't read fast enough from your drive into the memory. So that's why we're gonna switch to SSD as well, because in my experience is the best uh, balance to upgrade the SSD as well as the memory to give you the optimal performance and prolong the life of your MacBook Pro uh, in combination with the cleaning. Obviously, if you're using the MacBook Pro for a while, there's a fan inside and maybe some dust accumulates. So that's why I'm also gonna use my handy uh, compressed air blow up or blow out all the dust and then we can maybe even use some screen cleaner and restore this uh, old used MacBook Pro to a really, really nice working condition. Obviously, it's gonna be this exact combination that makes it nice to work with. Quick boot up times, data read fast from the solid status drive into the memory and then a sizable memory so that the operating system can store a lot of data in the memory and then between the memory and the CPU, that's where all the calculations take place. And uh, yeah, if you know my videos, this right now is the introductory part. Next up in part 2A, I'm gonna run the speed test to show you a nice before and after. We run the speed test with the old, uh, with the old hard disk drive. Then in part 2B, I'm gonna open up the MacBook Pro, show you what's inside, show you the cleaning process. We put in the new solid state disk drive. And once we have finished that in part three, I'm gonna do the after test and run the speed test again. Uh, both the disk speed test as well as the Geekbench test to see how overall the performance has increased by doing both these memory and solid status drive upgrade. And then if you want, if the first the memory upgrade video and the second solid status drive video is not enough, I'm also gonna do a third video, my little hack. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to create a bootable USB stick so that you can always use the USB stick with Mac OS on it to do a fresh install on any of your Mac devices. Uh, obviously that's uh, a little bit cumbersome if you always, you want to do a fresh install. You always have to go to the App Store, you always have to download Mac OS and then go through the installation process. It can in some cases make more sense to just use a bootable version of Mac OS on a USB stick and that's what's going to be up next in the third video in the series. But right now we're gonna just jump to the speed test part 2A before the upgrade. So awesome for being here. Let's get rolling guys. Now guys, I jumped into the computer and what I'm gonna do right now, we're gonna do a test before I install the SSD with the standard hard disk drive. And for this, I downloaded the Blackmagic disk speed test from the App Store. Blackmagic is a company that makes digital cameras. And obviously if you record uh, video footage that has a high data rate, you have to make sure that your storage device can handle the data rate. Uh, otherwise your recording or video editing will not work properly. And that's why the Blackmagic uh, disk speed test was created by the company. So, and this is what I'm gonna use right now. So I'm just gonna hit start and you're gonna see uh, right off the bat, the read and write speeds are quiet low. So that doesn't lend itself very well to do video editing. So if you wanna cut, a, edit a video on this machine with a old hard disk drive, it will simply be too slow. Uh, and the same goes for the memory. That's why uh, you already see that, yeah, maybe you could get away with low resolution footage, but still your editing performance would be pretty poor and all the other tests so, uh, I mean, it's, it's just too slow to do any meaningful work on it. And even if you start some apps, uh, the boot up time is long. And if you start apps, it always takes a while, it takes a while. And uh, yeah, 
that's what we're going to totally fix by putting an SSD. Everybody who has used the SSD before knows that's much, much nicer to work with. So that concludes the speed test part uh, 2B before. So let's open up the MacBook Pro, uh, clean it and put in the SSD and then run the speed test again and see what performance gain we get. Terrific guys, right now we jump to part 2B of the SSD upgrade for the Mac Pro and you will need a small Phillips head screwdriver and we're just gonna take out these screws here at the side. Uh, like I told you before, it may be different depending on your model. So check maybe the iFixit website if you have a different model than the one that I'm working on right now. But uh, important for you, if you take out these screws, uh, it's in fact, and maybe you know this from my other iMac uh, upgrade tutorials, that these uh, tend to have, or they can have different uh, sizes. So you don't wanna throw this all in one uh, small little basket uh, to put it back together. You kinda need to know w which size belongs where. So what I like to do is I, take them out and put them somewhere next uh, to me on the desk in exactly the same way I took it out so that when I reassemble it, it's uh, giving me a much easier time. Terrific guys, I zoomed out for you a little bit and as you can see, I removed all the screws and like I explained to you, I put them to the side, very well organized and we can now put in the solid state disk drive to make this MacBook Pro fast again. And as you can see, there's quite a little bit of dust and dirt that collected here. And obviously that depends on how frequent you are using this MacBook Pro and in what kind of environment. But I think I'm gonna blow this out with compressed air, maybe wipe it down uh, with some cleaning cloth and then also check down here. Uh, there's also quite a little bit of buildup. You can see here at the battery, lots of particles here and then here at that spot. So that's what I'm all gonna clean out. And once I have cleaned it, we can put in the new solid state disk drive instead of this really old hard disk drive. So let's clean the Mac and put this in. And very nice guys, I did a very thorough job. I cleaned the MacBook Pro. As you can see, everything looks really nice as if it's brand new. You can see very nice black and shiny, no dust at all. Yes, I already changed the memory in video number one. So if you wanna see that separately, obviously the combination of memory and SSD will yield you the best results. And also the back panel looks nice and shiny, like if, as if it is brand new. So that's a really good maintenance for this machine. And we're now gonna put in the new SSD, goodbye hard disk drive. And there are two screws that you have, have to loosen. So let me zoom in for you a little bit here so that that uh, becomes clearly visible. Maybe I'm moving this a little bit into the upper part. Basically, there's just this small bracket right here. And again, you just loosen these two Phillips screws and then you can carefully take this bracket all out. And then there's this flap and then you very carefully lift this up. Be gentle to it because on the bottom below, you see that's this, it's not a normal cable. It's like this flat cable. And uh, yeah, I'm quickly gonna remove this connector. And in essence, we are ready to replace this very old Toshiba drive. Um, you can see here, it's a little bit of a specialty thing. So I think it's called a T650. I can link a, a set below, so that might be handy. Those are not normal screws, so that's not a Phillips screwdriver. We have to take these out and put them into the SSD as well, because obviously that's how this is hold in place down here. So let me quickly change this out and I'm gonna be right back. So guys, I really hope this, if you have never done a maintenance job on your computer, I really hope this helps. Uh, I really enjoy doing these kind of jobs. Um, some people, maybe if you're not uh, comfortable enough to doing this, maybe you have a friend, someone you know, a relative that can do it for you. Um, let me quickly put this, uh, these uh, tiny uh, screws in here so that this fits back in well. And then once I have done this, we put the system back together and run the speed test in part three, as you can see in the navigation. And guys, if you want to do a fresh install on your system, which that's what I usually like to do. I don't like to clone. I just like to fresh install. Then by all means, check out uh, part number three. I mean, you can check it out. You don't have to. Where I'll show you how to create a bootable installer on a USB stick for Mac OS. And as you can see, I put the, the small pins in here. Let's connect this uh, flat S8 cable. Very easy to do. And yeah, then it 
it's just you just put it back into place very gently and uh, yeah I mean what I noticed this solid state test drive it feels lighter than the Toshiba the drive I mean this always you hear when it's running so it creates like this typical hard disk drive noise this also is lighter so your whole notebook should be lighter and it consumes less power so maybe you even get a little bit slightly better battery life out of it and uh, with that I think this concludes the install part let's just jump to the next part and run the speed test of the freshly installed system and like I said if you want to see the fresh install check out video number three if you want to it's an option guys awesome for tuning in let's uh, do the speed test this should be a really really fast boot time here in a second so let's see what we get performance wise excellent now that the ssd is installed we jump to part three i'm going to do two speed tests right now first i'm going to stop the boot time with the stopwatch and then i'm going to run the blackmagic disk speed test again and just as a reminder uh, what we did so far in the video number one i upgraded the memory in video number two i upgraded the ssd so right now we're testing the speed with both the 16 gigabyte versus the four and the solid state instead of the hard disk drive so i'm going to push the start button and time the timing and uh, yeah before it took over a minute it was pretty slow uh, no wonder but now that we did both upgrades and we also did a fresh install the boot time should be much much faster and as you can see uh, about 17 seconds so that's a really nice improvement obviously it's not all about the boot up time in essence it's really the combination of both the memory upgrade as well as the ssd the data gets read really fast and put into the memory and then it can stay into the memory and hasn't be to be dumped out and read again because it's a very generous 16 gigabytes so let's quickly lock in and overall i really have to say the whole system runs much much snappier so that's really a terrific upgrade uh, as you may already know it's not all in the numbers it's also in the day-to-day -day usability but that's why i like to do the comparison so before we had a, a speed of about 70 so let's hit the speed test and i let this quickly run through and then i'm going to be back in a second with the results and there we go i stopped the test as you can see a lot of green check marks so that should be good enough if you want to get into video editing maybe on a budget or if you want to do video editing on the go if you have uh, smaller projects with 1080p footage i guess you can get away with can get away with editing editing on an old macbook pro obviously a big workstation computer is always going to be superior when you want to do video editing video editing also you usually need the big screen so uh, it's not a perfect solution but in a pinch it works fine and also it's not all about video editing not everybody wants to do video editing some people they just want to do day-to-day -day tasks and obviously if you click on something and it opens quickly that makes for a much uh, nicer user experience let me close this up real quick so what i'm going to do next i'm going to jump to part four summary and conclusion and i also invite you if you want you can check out my video number three where i'll show you how to create a bootable usb install stick with Hi Sierra or macOS Mojave on it. That way you can always install from the USB stick faster onto your devices. If you have never done that, that's a kind of neat thing to learn. And that's up in video number three. And I'm also gonna run the Geekbench test in video number three to see is there actually a difference in the Geekbench test when you do all three things. Reinstall the system, add the memory and to the SSD. So let's jump to part four and then maybe if you want, you can watch video number three. It's optional guys. So awesome for tuning in. Very good guys. This concludes video number two of the MacBook Pro 13 inch from 2011 SSD upgrade. And you have seen that's a pretty straightforward process. Almost, almost anybody I would say can do an upgrade like this and the maintenance and cleaning as well. Only one thing I would encourage you to keep in mind is that when you swap out the drive with a factory fresh new one, obviously there's no data on it. So if you hit the start button with an empty drive, you uh, get this gray screen with the folder and the question mark. Let me show this quickly to you here. And uh, that's uh, not very nice. So please make sure if you don't have a bootable USB stick yet with the operating system to check out my video number three, because there I show you how to put the bootable installer on that stick so that you can install right from here the mac os operating system onto your newly upgraded macbook pro and obviously uh, benchmark wise uh, as you have seen in the before and after test 
before it took like uh, uh, over a minute and after putting in the SSD, I think it was like 17, 18 seconds. So that was a nice increase. And having, after having done the memory upgrade, the SSD upgrade and the fresh install, I did also run the Geekbench test once more. So that's in video number three. Uh, right now in this video, the video number two, you have seen the Blackmagic disk speed test. I think that was uh, 70 before and then uh, about 500 after. So that's also very nice. I think the Blackmagic disk speed test shows the improvement a little bit better than the Geekbench. But the biggest difference is really in boot up time. And for example, when you log into your uh, user account, then when the desktop opens with the hard disk drive, everything was very slow. You had to click on something. It really took a while to, for the windows to open up. So that was a little bit cumbersome. And now with the 16 gigabytes, four times the memory instead of 416 and the SSD, everything runs, runs smoother and snappier. I just click on it. It's there right away and the system has much more yeah, power and breathing, breathing room. Obviously that does not make your CPU faster, although the graphics card with the memory upgrade went from, the graphics card memory went from 300 to 500 because it's the Intel HD 3000. So that was also nice. But guys, uh, I digress, uh, please keep also in mind that when doing this upgrade to have a small, I think Phillips head screwdriver, and then maybe one of these sets with the specialized because that was, uh, I think it says T550 on here. So T550, I'm also gonna link that in the video description below. And uh, yeah, uh, excellent for tuning in. Make sure to check out uh, ifixit.com or everymac.com if you have a different MacBook Pro model. Like I told you in the beginning, there's a lot of uh, product variety, especially in the mobile segment of Apple's product portfolio. So they seem to change the models quite frequently. If you have a newer one, uh, you have to make sure that this, uh, the parts are not somehow soldered onto the board. Then you're basically not able to upgrade. So I think the older models tend to be a little bit more easy to upgrade or much easier to upgrade than the newer ones. Guys, I digress. Uh, awesome for tuning in. Have fun with your uh, well-maintained and well taken care for Mac Pro. I see you in the next video where we do the fresh install. All the rest to you, have fun with your new gear. Take care. And because you watched my used MacBook Pro SSD upgrade tutorial, you may also be interested in watching the other videos in this series because I'm gonna compare the upgraded old MacBook Pro against the brand new stock uh, MacBook Pro from 2019. And you can find the other videos uh, on my channel or in the video description below. Guys, awesome for tuning in. You can subscribe right now uh, as many people have done already before you. I see you in the next video. Take care.